Hey guys, this is Jay here from Wisdom Watch Report, and today I'm going to be doing just a quick overview of the Oberst Morgan Explorer. Uh, I just got this watch yesterday, so I'm not going to be doing a full-fledged review of it quite yet. I just want to get a little bit more wrist time before I get into that. But uh, for those that are still waiting for theirs, or guys that are wondering if they want to put in a pre-order, I figure I'll make this video give you a better look at what the watch really looks like on the wrist than in person. Um, so far, I'm really liking this watch. Like I said, I just got it yesterday. wasn't really sure what to expect since uh, I've been, you know, waiting with the hype, and I didn't expect it to meet the hype as much as I'd hoped to. Um, but it actually did, for the most part. Um, wears a little bit bigger than I thought it would. Um, overall, the specs of this watch is a 42 millimeters um, case size, 51 millimeter lug length, uh, 20, 20 millimeter bracelet. And uh, its overall thickness is 12 millimeters, including the case back, uh, 10 millimeters without the case back. Um, it actually does wear quite thin, though, um, a lot thinner than I thought it would. I actually like that. I have a lot of really thick profile watches, like a Marathon T-SAR, or uh, some others that kind of get bulky to wear from time to time. But this one actually has been doing pretty well as I wear it. Um, overall, this watch, um, one thing I, I noticed right away, the bezel on a lot of my watches. Um, really adds to whether it has a quality feel or not. This is my first Oberst Morgan that has a unidirectional bezel. The other, the Branco, is just a stationary, doesn't have any turning bezel. So I was really hoping that it wouldn't be cheap feeling or cheap sounding, because that really just, for me at least, makes what, you know, determines, a big part determining whether the watch is going to be a, really a keeper or not. Um, I'm happy to say that this one, the bezel action is really nice on it. That's just like always the first thing I fiddle with as soon as I get it out of the box. Um, definitely happy with this one so far. Uh, really keeps keeps the feel of the watch in check. Um, has almost no downward play initially. It's very little. I don't really see any downward play. You can barely just a little, maybe half a millimeter. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, especially at this price point. Definitely, uh, definitely happy with that. Um, no crown guards. Although I, I did notice online with one of the pictures that the crown stem looked really thin. So it had almost no catch to it. Um, it. It is longer than I thought it would be. It looks like it has threading on the the, um, the inside of the crown further, and inside of the case, rather. It goes deeper than what I thought, so it locks down pretty well, and it's a double gasket seal. So I'm happy with that as well. Um, the bracelet on this, it's almost like a watch do or um, like an anvil-type bracelet. You see it has a signed clasp there, scissor clasp. Um, it is sized with screws, and the case is connected with one screw on the bracelet and a larger screw to take off the end links. Like I said, I'm not doing a full review here. Um, I'll get into that another time. So I'm just doing this so you guys can see what it really looks like. And there's the helium escape valve. Um, the dial is set pretty close to the face. You can see. It's probably about two and a half millimeters down. So it doesn't really mean anything, but I, I actually I prefer mine to be a little bit deeper just to give it some depth. But this this is okay, it's not a big deal. Um, and this is the brushed, um, the brushed black model. I also have the blasted blue model right here, which it, it. A lot of people have been wondering about like the color of it, myself included. I, pictures kept showing the face to be a lot lighter. Um, wasn't really too happy with that, but um, it, it is a lot darker in person. It's just very difficult to photograph. Especially with the glass, the glare picks up on it, and then the, the bezel keeps to the same color. So right now it looks like almost baby blue with a dark blue bezel. This would be um, more true to life, right about here. Now it is, it is a little bit lighter than the bezel, but not this much lighter than the bezel. See, like a little angle makes a huge difference with this watch. And this is the blasted case. I'll compare them again. I 
One thing I noticed when I was sizing this, the, um, the screws, it feels like they blasted the watch all at once and they didn't clean off the bracelet because the screws, as I was unscrewing them, were like really gritty, like as if I just, you know, went to the beach and dunked my watch in sand and I had piles of like little sediment coming out of the bracelet for whatever, I'm guessing it's whatever they use to blast the case. Wasn't too happy with that. Um, the bracelet was actually like really stiff because of all like the grit inside of it and I had to like you know, bend each, each link to, to kind of free that up and it took a while and it still is kind of gritty like that but it's, it's nowhere near as bad as it was originally. Um, I know that they had the Nevin a while back and I didn't hear of that problem so maybe they changed a case and bracelet suppliers and it became an issue this time around. But uh, I'm actually not, this is my first fully blasted watch. Not too uh, thrilled with the finish, but that's that's my personal opinion of it. I, I much prefer the the brushed, but uh, a lot of people have gotten theirs already. They're really happy with the way the the blasted looks. The case itself, if you like bead blasted finishes, they did a pretty good job. It looks pretty seamless. I don't I don't see any um, any abnormalities, like little brush spots or little, any hairline polish marks. Um, the bezel is just the same type smooth, sure action as the other one, so. I know it wasn't just a happenstance that mine ended up being pretty good because both of them came out to be really well to use. And as you can see here, just the case back. Like you see right there, that link, that link is just kind of stuck in its own little spot because it's that grit. If I pull it, it'll kind of straighten out a little bit. And that's probably because this, this gray spot in here, it's really annoying. But overall, I guess that'll give it a couple days of wear and that'll go away. But uh, the, blue, the blue color is really nice. I was kind of worried that it was going to be lighter. It's not, so. Overall, the timekeeping so far has been pretty good. Oberst Morgan actually supplies you with a... Um, a movement, I guess, update when they send the watch out to you. Um, how many seconds off a day it is, plus or minus. They give you the movement's amplitude and also, um, what else was it? And the balance error, I think. The beat rate error. So, I set these yesterday at about maybe 2.30. And so far, as you can see, I set them both exactly right at the right time. This watch has kept time perfectly. There's no, like, literally, I don't even know if it's within a second at, at most, if, if not dead on. Uh, this one has gained you know, about seven or eight seconds. So Probably because of the way it was left overnight. That has something to do with it, so it might even out. Um, I took this one off and left it crown up. So Overall, um, they were both within you know, plus or minus four seconds in the Oberst Morgan email that I got from Justin. So they, they should, theoretically, uh, their performance should be very close to one another. So overall, um, I'm pretty happy with these. When you get yours in the mail, let's just quick go, quickly go over the packaging. It'll come in one of these orange boxes. It's Pelican style case. And you'll just get your warranty card information. This is just how to wind the watch. All that, we already know how to do that. This uh, isoframe style strap. Kind of, I'm probably not going to even be using this. It kind of feels kind of cheap, honestly. It's not too great, but they didn't have to add it in at all, so it's a nice bonus. Comes with an extra lug bar. This is not a not a screw for um for the sizing links. It's actually connecting the bracelet to the case. That's what this is. This time around, they gave you a screwdriver. Sizing those links. Mine. Um, I got about two screws out of mine before it disconnected from from the actual um, handle. Not fully coming out, but it, it's not tapped in anymore, so it'll just freely turn, so I can't really use this anymore. But again, they didn't even have to. I'm going to keep the extra links under there. Um, does a good job for shipping. I would definitely not worry about it in shipping at all, especially with FedEx. So if they decide to throw it over the fence when they deliver it, like they usually do, it probably won't break. Um, overall, definitely definitely happy with this watch for the price it was. Um, 
I believe I paid two fifty nine or two sixty nine for this. Definitely worth it. So I'll end with just a, a side by side. And I hope you guys like it. Um, I'll do a full review sometime later, you know, next week or later this week, hopefully. And uh, after it gets um, enough of its time for me to really see what it's like, I'll do that review and also um, a comparative re review with the Helsin Shark Diver. That's because these two, they seem to be uh, very similar specs, but huge price difference. So I think it'll be interesting to compare them. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comments section below. Thanks, guys.